I would say to all the viewers here that are watching this transmission that you matter more than you could ever know. You have purpose that is so deeply important. Just by you being here is an act of bravery and you are revered on the other side as an absolute hero. So the Arturians, what they communicated to me, they look for people that are calling out uh, on Planet Psych Hours to be of service, to be of service for the evolution of humanity, be of service for their own, uh, um, for their own um, uh, trans transition, for their for their own evolution, their own personal evolution, um, and moving past fear, past war with inside of themselves and allowing that to spill out upon the world. Usually people are like, I don't know what to expect. I don't know how to meditate. And, you know, and they feel as though they need to be something. What these intention groups show, what I'm trying to teach is that you don't need to be anything. You don't need to be anything but yourself. And if you can intend and you can send love to another person and see them happy, whole, and vibrant in all ways, shapes, and form, that is enough. Anybody can do it. Anybody can. You don't have to know how to meditate. You know, you don't have to be a, a, a Sufi master, you know, um, or a Tibetan monk or anything like that. That's, that's what Lynn also conveyed um, through her exploration and also doing brain scans of people, you know, before and after these groups. Um, is that their minds were reaching these states of, of meditation and oneness on these scans, these brain scans that Sufi masters were in, in a state of meditative oneness or Tibetan monks, you know, in, 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 their, in their states of oneness as well. And um, you don't need to go through any kind of uh, psychedelic experience either. It's because that consciousness that is within us, which is creating all this reality, is enough. Greetings and good day. This is The Channeled Truth. I'm your host, Thomas Leihart, and I'm a channeler myself, and I love exploring the works of Seth and Jane Roberts, Abraham Hicks, and Bashar. And with me today, we have a very special guest that is going to be talking to us and with us about quantum healing circles and intention circles and the power of the group mind and the power inherent in synchronizing a group mind into oneness on a specific intention, a healing intention, whatnot. So without further ado, let's bring Kate into the show. Kate, thanks so much for being here with us today. Hey Tom, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so I understand you perhaps have a story you wanna share about meeting the Arcturians, which are very much related to this idea of group mind and group coherence. So let's start off with that one. Sure, I'd be happy to tell the story and for people to, to feel the transmission of what I would like to say around all that, and my experience around it. I have been very interested in, in um, healing, healing modalities um, and energetic healings with the mind, heart, and body um, with each individual person that I work with. Um, I've been doing uh, healing work for um, probably about 12 years. And um, I was attuned to Reiki about 12 years ago. And when you channel that work, um, it is attuned to other uh, radio stations, you could say, to other places and dimensions. Um, uh, there's information and beings that will come through to help guide you. And it helps lead you to your, um, to your soul purpose, to your life purpose. Uh, what makes you most happy and satisfied here 
on this planet. That's what I have experienced with uh, energy healings, healing myself and helping to heal my clients as well. Um, so the story of the Arturians and <laughs> their role with all of this and helping us um, to evolve. Um, so I've never, I've never, I've always been into extraterrestrial um, uh, shows and, um, and love talking about extraterrestrial abductions and UFOs and, and all of that stuff. And, but I never really could get into people channeling, um, extraterrestrials. <laughs> it just was, it just was so foreign to me. And, um, that all changed when I received an attunement at a certain fair uh, that we have here in Nevada City. People might know that fair. Uh, it's called the Psychic Fair. <laughs> um, and it was last summer. Um, I received an attunement from a woman that uh, stated that she worked with angelic forces. And I chose to work with this woman because, you know, if you've ever been to those fairs, the energy can get kind of weird there. <laughs> it can kind of push you around and, you know, you just have to follow your intuition. And if you feel pulled to go there, you'll find the right person to talk to. And I was pulled to the corner of, of this room uh, where this woman was facilitating healings um, with, and with angelic entities. And I got near her booth and I immediately started to cry. And I didn't know why. <laughs> I was told by her son that that usually happens. And I just stood there and I just waited for my turn. I said, okay, I'm going to receive a healing from this woman. And I did. Um, and my body went into sort of convulsions or electrical uh, movements uh, with the healing that she was facilitating with me. And I believe that my energy system was opening up and widening um, with the uh releasing trauma from my body in a past life that she was helping me with to clear at that moment in time. And um, I left there uh, feeling wonderful, but on the drive home, I had this vision where it was like two synchronistic realities of this reality and then this other reality of seeing this being with beautiful blue skin, beautiful blue eyes, eyes that were just astonishingly blue and beautiful and just full of love. A uh, little bit of facial hair <laughs> on this being. Um, and he had his left hand up like this with a symbol in his hand, which I didn't understand what it meant at the time, but I did find an understanding to that later on in time. And from his heart, I, I could see this vision in a panoramic, 3D panoramic vision. And his heart just illuminated, it glowed this beautiful light, this beautiful light. And I actually had to pull over the car because I couldn't see. <laughs> I couldn't see that that's really all I could see. It was this, these two realities coming together and, and maybe the, some of the audience members have seen things like this. Maybe you've seen something like this, Tom. Um, I've had these other visions before these other profound visions. Actually, there was one other, um, that I had to pull over the car that was like this. Maybe, maybe we'll get to that, um, later on the broadcast, but he communicated to me, uh, my soul was part of, related to, or the same frequency of the nation of people that he is a part of. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I don't know what to do with that. Um, that's really, that's really beautiful. I don't know what that symbol meant, but I know this is profound. And I was so moved by this. I was like, I have to draw this being. I have to draw. I, have to, I went home. I started to draw. And I just, I said, I can't. I would be insulting this being if I tried to draw what he looked like. Very, very cool vision. Very interesting. Um, fast forward. Uh, after that, uh, I was guided. Uh, I was told um, through um, through. Well, my guides, or you could say God, um, that uh, God consciousness um, 
that uh, they wanted me to look into this work by Lynn McTaggart. Uh, and Lynn, Lynn McTaggart um, has facilitated healing groups with people um, to lower violence in war-torn areas. Um, she started off with leaves and seeds to uh, um, to have um, growth um, accelerate uh, in controlled groups with seeds or leaves or purifying water. And so uh, she she really put a, a scientific value. Um, on these experiments uh, through collective mind, where people 8,000 miles away would um, collectively intend for uh, a control group of seeds out of many groups of seeds, like let's say uh, control group number eight, they would focus on that picture um, to grow faster. And, and they always did. It was like a very high percentage. And her work is very important because she had all these measurable scientific experiments to say, you know, this is working. This is working. And so she moved over to war-torn areas and saw the, the violence drop in those areas. And then she moved to uh, healing groups, putting people together in groups of eight um, and focusing on the uh, healing intention uh, for somebody like, let's say they have pain in their hip. Uh, people will intend for that pain to be released as a collective mind intention. And what she found was it wasn't anything that was subtle in nature. This energy, this energy that people produced was something that was incredibly powerful. So not only did that person release, receive a healing and maybe that um, the energy was relief, released from their hip or they found the answers to why that pain is in their hip, but the, but the altruistic act of praying for that person of intending for that person as a group, that that person that intended uh, also received a healing as well. And what I have found um, with these groups, I think I've hosted about 10 or 11 so far, I've seen depression lift in people. I've seen depression lift in myself. I've seen a sustainable joy within my heart and my mind and a, a love that has that has emanated from me in a presence with people that I've never felt with, that I've never felt in my life, a, a real presence with people through love. So this is a sustainable energy and it's, it's past fear, it's that, it passed that low density. So the Arturians, what they communicated to me through a QHHT session that I had, a quantum healing hypnosis session, which is a, hip, a hypnosis technique by uh, the famous Dolores Cannon, bless her heart, <laughs> the late De Dolores Cannon. Um, uh, they just randomly came through uh, because I wanted to know uh, more about them, um, that they look for people that are calling out uh, on planet psych hours to be of service to be of service for the evolution of humanity, be of service for their own, uh, um, for their own um, uh, trans transition, for their, for their own evolution, their own personal evolution, um, and moving past fear, past war with inside of themselves and allowing that to spill out upon the world. And so I have been calling out to this for quite some time, not, not two extraterrestrials, let's say, but, but to God. To God to be a conduit for that love, and so they took interest. And I, I do believe, I do believe that they, they uh, uh, led me to the to Lynn McTaggart's work. And so they communicated to me in these groups um, uh, uh, through the QHH uh, T session that in these groups they, they, they energetically in in a fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth dimensional realm they stand around us in these groups. And they help assist us get to these higher levels of one mind consciousness. Because those were the techniques that they used to evolve themselves. And so it is their duty as a nation, it is their duty as, as people, as a community, to assist during this time through collective mind oneness and showing species like ours that are right on the edge that we are one consciousness we are one consciousness 
and that will eliminate war. That will bring us together to save ourselves and to evolve just like them. To evolve just like them. And so it's so special and so beautiful. And um, so, yeah, uh, I think that that's their main message that comes through is that there we are one. We are being assisted by benevolent forces that took that evolved just like us. And we should be so proud of how far we've come and where we are going. And it all starts with a choice with our own evolution with inside of ourselves through self-love. Awesome. Thank you for that. There's so many things in that story to unpack. I don't even know where to begin, but the way it's you close, yeah. absolutely. The way you close with self love, I really feel like that is the key is just self love, right? It's, it's you have to be the vibration that you wish to see in the world, right? So we're busy trying to change the world or wishing the world would change, right? But the person that changes ourselves is to raise our frequency to that state of self-appreciation, self-love. And then what you put out is what you get back just to radiate that into the world. And that's the transformative energy. So yeah, thank you for that. I think that's the, probably the most important, but fantastic, amazing story. Yeah, the Arcturian energy very much feels very extra dimensional, I'll, I'll even say. Yes, I'll, extraterrestrial like out of this world literally but extra dimensional like it's multi-dimensions a higher level right where that oneness is just it is all there is and that's the primary reality and here we are beings of separation experiencing the valid experience of feeling separate but there is this quality and i think the viewers of the show can definitely relate it's a time of breaking down those barriers and starting to really feel the oneness and that's that's what takes us beyond war and beyond you know tribalism and just into this unit of consciousness so yeah thank you for bringing that in as well are there any particular experiences you want to share in, in how you're hosting these circles or what that might look like or just perhaps some words of inspiration of what you've seen absolutely well I have seen people come into these circles and, and they don't, you know, we just, we just set up chairs um, around a table that have a, it has a candle in the middle, which represents the light within us. And usually people are like, I don't know what to expect. I don't know how to meditate. And, you know, and they feel as though they need to be something. What these intention groups show, what, what I'm trying to teach is that you don't need to be anything. You don't need to be anything but yourself. And if you can intend and you can send love to another person and see them happy, whole, and vibrant in all ways, shapes, and form, that is enough. And this light that we have within us, within our hearts, this God light, when we come together and we focus on that intention for that person to be uh, happy, whole, and vibrant and to see them reaching their goal or whatever they're asking for in their life, it gets to a pin. It, it gets to a pinpointed, laser accurate um, prayer of um, uh, it, it. It amplifies my intention and it amplifies it, and it times it in other dimensions as well. So I have seen, uh, for example, I've seen a lot of amazing stuff um, in these circles. We had a woman come in that had a kidney infection. She was um, going to go to the hospital the next day because it was pretty bad. And we intended for her, uh, for that kidney infection to be lifted from her body. Um, she said that the energy was so um, intense that her teeth were chattering. Um, and she felt a sense of, uh, of, of wholeness and completion to the group, uh, a wholeness and connection and and completion with inside of herself. The next day, um, her kidney infection was gone. No trace. No trace of it. Um, we had another woman that lost five thousand uh, dollars. She thought somebody had taken it from her, maybe, or she lost it. She didn't know, and she was distraught over it, but accepted it that maybe she had lost it. 
And she said, hey, you know, can we just intend for me to get this money back? And we did it. We saw her getting this money back. We visualized it. The, the, the trick with these intentions is to see, to smell, to taste, you know, the, the vision of it, the uh, intention of it, and to see where it takes you on the landscape of it. Also, we saw her with her, you know, having the money, the money raining down on her, her finding the money. Within four hours of that group, she found the money. It was in an obscure place at a different house. And she just had a hit to go there. She just had a feeling to go there and to look in this drawer. But I think the most uh, miraculous thing is to see the sustainable joy within people, to see people connecting with one another and loving each other, hugging each other and telling each other, we love each other. We love, we love each other. I love you. That's not a taboo thing to say. It's not a keeping thing to say. I love you. I love you because you are me and we're all connected as one. So I'll just say, I'll just with wrapping that up that these, these circles of connecting together or even just through the internet, it's important because it brings on a mystical experience for somebody maybe that never has had one, their own personal mystical experience of connection. In, in one mind consciousness where negative thoughts can't exist. Where negative thoughts, love and fear cannot exist in the same place. That's what it teaches, love and fear, and it brings you to a place of love. And then from there, their life starts to change. They start to, they start to change inward. They start to change from within. And they start to feel their soul purpose more. Their God-given gifts shine more. Their joy shines more. Their depression lifts. And they understand that life doesn't have to be hard. Life can be a joyous experience with every person that you have on an intimate level. On an, and you can have that moment with yourself as a rolling wave in every moment of your life. Joy and fun and love. Awesome. That's just such a beautiful message, a timeless message, but highly, highly appropriate for our time as we're going through this shift and transformation. And then circling back to Lynn McTaggart's work and this work with the healing circles, or I don't even know if work is the right <laughs> word, right? The play, you know, we need new language for some of these states of consciousness. But it's not even just that healing energy over distance works. Like I know that works, right? Like I do long distance healing and long distance healing is not a new idea, at least in the spiritual circles. But the idea that the people sending the energy receive healing, right? That, I, it's like she really highlights that in the work. And it's like, it's not just that you're sending it to person A over there, or maybe it's one of the people in the circle, right? But it's everyone that's sending the energy benefits. See, because, you know, Bashar often says what you put out is what you get back. And then you also have to be yes. the vibration of that which you wish to put out in the world, right? So you by necessity connect to love connect to gratitude and to healing energy to the oneness of mind in order to even begin to send that energy and guess who benefits you right because you have to be yes. in that vibrational yes. state and then there's the synchrony yeah. of the circle vibrating in accord uh in, in oneness right and then in one is one chord it's almost like the side effect is the healing that's sent over a distance or to a specific target Right, but it's just the, the magic really is in the group synchrony. It's like that symphony of harmonic sound, right? So I, I, that's, just, that's just a lovely thing to explore. It really, it tugs on my heart to be like, I wanna explore that too, right? So, and it's also very much, anybody can set these circles up, right? So maybe you can speak to that, how, you know, it's not, you know, only certain people can do it. Like maybe you can speak to just how anybody can begin this journey of discovery. That's beautiful, Tom. Well said. Yeah. So that that is what I'm most excited about. Um, and that's what I can try to convey in these groups every time. I'm like, if you would like to lead this, you can. I'll ask, you know, Sally or John or anything. <laughs> I will teach you how to do it. Anybody can do it. Anybody can. You don't have to know how to meditate, you know, you don't have to be a, a, a Sufi master, you know, 
um, or Tibetan monk or anything like that. That's that's what Lynn also conveyed um, through her exploration and also doing brain scans of people, you know, before and after these groups, um, is that their minds were reaching these states of, of meditation and oneness on these scans, these brain scans that Sufi masters were in, in a state of meditative oneness or Tibetan monks, you know, in, in their in their states of oneness as well. And um, you don't need to go through any kind of uh, psychedelic experience either. It's because that consciousness that is within us, which is creating all this reality is enough. <laughs> and it's our intention through that when we focus it. So all you need to do, I mean, if anybody wants to contact me, we'll go over that at the end of the video with how you can contact me, but uh, you, you can, you can set up these groups yourself. They're very simple. They're very easy. There's no dogma around them and just feel, feel the connection and the power as you're holding somebody's hand and the love that you have for that person. And that's really, that's really about it. And and um, there's there are some guided meditation techniques that are pretty simple, um, and I'd be happy to show people how to do that. Um, but I would also say, get ready to walk this intention. What will happen is you will start to, it will saturate your life. And it will also bring up traumas from within you to clear you. So you can channel this energy even more and then be able to reach states of consciousness, channeling your higher self, your soul wisdom, your soul wisdom. That's what I found is that people have also been able to reach uh, places of, of uh, uh, connecting to their higher self consciousness through these groups. And that is sustainable. Awesome. It's like training ourselves into a whole new vibration. You know, it begins in the yes. circle and you're sending love to someone and then you realize, well, why don't I just do that all the time? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but you will. If, if Yes, if you if you start to um, if you really get super passionate about it, you will start to walk the intention every day. You will start to emanate this love from within you and around you. I've, I've had people tell me that. Um, the vibration that I give off is is very peaceful and it comforts them. And that is important because that is really necessary during this time of ascension is to radiate peace from us. So we help others radiate that within side of themselves as well. Yeah, and something that really you know strikes me as as unique to this is you know when we're meditating it's it's a solo experience right well, even when we're sending love outside you know so-called outside right it's still the solitary experience but with the group there's there's this magic that happens in the coherence of the energy you create a a bubble reality a consensus reality together but also that quality of let me take the focus off of myself the you know, the individuated self, which we've explored for thousands of years on this planet. Let me tap into something different. Like, let me shift my focus into the group harmonic. Let me shift my focus into sending love to somebody else, as opposed to just always thinking about, you know, self and survival and how I'm moving through the world as an individuated consciousness, right? So it, there's all these things happening that are almost like, you know, a, a, I don't want to say side effects, but it's sort of like it kind of sneaks in sideways, so to speak, right? Because because you do take that focus off of the self, right? And we're 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 so trained in our culture to just be individualistic and think about, you know, at a certain frequency band, right? So this it just gives us a glimpse of one mind consciousness, and it just helps us to step into that. So yeah, thank you for bringing that in as well. Yeah, that's that's wonderfully said. Really, I love I love how you said group harmonic because it is like music when we collectively focus on an intention for somebody, but also for each other as a whole as well. And that energy, that music, that resonance spills out upon the world from us like a golden ripple. 
you know, I think we all can imagine, you know, that, that classic, um, you know, metaphor of throwing a stone in a still pond. And that ripple extends out and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger the closer it gets to the shore. And that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing when we're sending love vibration out. That's what we're doing when we, when we intend for somebody. That's what we're doing when we're present with somebody. When we're present with somebody and we, we are talking to them like we would want to talk to ourselves, you know, with deep self love or seeing that God spark within them and speaking to that, that, that creates a ripple. And these groups, they go beyond that as well. They go, they go past space and time and they go into other realities as well. That, that information, that love that can only be produced here in this reality, in this density, like a diamond under pressure, right? Can only be cultivated in this reality helps other dimensions as well heal and helps. I, I truly believe it helps God evolve and expand as the entity that it is, that we are, that it's dreaming through us. And I, I'll, I will also add that Coming together like this, you, you understand, you, you understand that your life has a purpose, that you have a purpose, a, a rich, deep purpose. Even though we might feel small, you know, compared to everything else, or, you know, we might have just a nine to five job or whatever. It's just, you know, maybe we're a little bored or, you know, just being here in this reality and having the experiences that we have is so important because without you, you couldn't have the universe because our consciousness is universal consciousness, is universal love. And it is constantly creating and expanding and experiencing itself. And I think I've mentioned to you before, it's like within our souls, our souls are refined through our experience here and healing traumas and wounds and meeting that darkness and coming back to love and self-love. And it, it, it uh, cuts the diamond in, 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 in more of an intricate fashion. It becomes more of an intricate diamond with inside of ourselves to experience love in a higher and higher and higher level of vibration. So I would say to all the viewers here that are watching this transmission that you matter more than you could ever know. You have purpose that is so deeply important. Just by you being here is an act of bravery and you are revered on the other side as an absolute hero. You are revered on the other side as an absolute hero. I'm almost gonna cry saying that. Because I think, I think people just get so caught up in their story and they don't need to suffer. They don't need to feel like life is so hard. That in this moment, you can truly love who you are because you are an expression of God or whatever you want to call it. I just use the word God. <laughs> Universal consciousness. And that is deeply important for God to experience itself through you and to expand itself through you and knowing itself through you. That is beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I feel, I always like, I feel like I'm going to cry, but I'm like just so overjoyed. Yeah, <laughs> tears of joy, exactly. Yeah, it's just so, you know, you just want to hold each person in that light of like, you matter. You matter. And yeah. 
Yeah, that is just, you were channeling right there. I mean, you 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 shift your energy shifted into something uh, extra dimensional. Uh, you were really <laughs> just bringing that through. It's beautiful. So thank you. Yeah. If you have any questions too, um, feel free to ask. Um, so um, I've been I'm a little new at channeling, but since doing these groups, it's just like all the time. Um, <laughs> A uh, higher self uh, wisdom and also um, angelic wisdom as well. Yeah, it's it's you know I I I feel like I'm new to channeling as well, even though it feels like such an ancient ancient art at the same time. But yeah, it's just that quality of tapping in and and sharing it with the world. You know, it's you take one step there's that old saying you know when you take one step god takes a hundred steps towards you right i don't know if that was roomy or oh i love that but very true and you know that doves dovetails into bishar's formula right the passion that's your soul's calling it's like you know it through passion mm -hmm. it might not show up as you know a, a voice on high telling you what to do but it will come as the thing that you're very excited to do the thing that the longing in your heart you know, that's the soul note that you came to play in the symphony of life. So, so yeah, the more you access that, the more the vibrant, the more that vibration goes up. But also, like you mentioned, well, it was very important to know, you know, that also you, you start getting stretched, right? You start illuminating with from within that soul note. Well, it will start illuminating also those places of the darkness, the, the negative beliefs that want to constrain, right? So, it's beautifully put like, you know, the diamond and the rough, right? Or like the soul's journey is this quality of forgetfulness and amnesia as we drop into the density. And then the beloved remembrance, you know, the homecoming, coming home, right? It's that hero's journey. I love how you, you mentioned that word hero, right? You're, you're on this journey and you go through the forgetfulness, the traumas and whatnot, the tribulations, but then you go through the, the act of remembering and, and and just connect reconnecting com coming home to yourself right and it comes back to self-love and sounding that soul note may this really inspire the viewers out there to really sound that note through the actions that you take the action grounds the soul's extra dimensional energy into our physical plane and just get your hands in the clay and take those actions on those things that really excite you the most from within that deep heart longing, you know, make it happen, right? As I go into channeling, things expand. As, you know, as Kate, as you start doing these circles, these, you know, things start lining up, things start happening, right? It's that action, take that action. Maybe, maybe you'll be called to leading healing circles, intention circles, prayer circles, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, I like how you said there's no dogma, right? It, it, it can fold into any tradition that feels comfortable for you or that you're used to. It doesn't have to be something completely new, right? But it's, it's simple, right? It's coming together and forming that group harmonic and, and seeing where it takes you, right? So, so do you have any closing comments uh, before we close out the episode? Gosh, that went fast. <laughs> it sure did. <laughs> Um, can I do a very quick meditation with you in the audience? I invite you to take a nice deep breath in. And a conscious exhalation. And a conscious inhalation. And I invite you to breathe into this moment of now, this divine moment of now, this divine moment of now. And to feel the power of reality that's being created around you, that has created yourself, the immense power of love that has bloomed into this dream that we are experiencing. And come back to a place of self-love. Start to see all of the wonderful things going right in your life and who you are. All of your talents, all of your gifts. And just to visualize yourself, do this every day. 
just very simple, just like that. Just start with that and that's it. Breathing into this divine moment of now and feeling what it has to offer you. This is wisdom from Sarah Landon channeling the council. The power of this divine moment of now and you, nothing could make you happier than what this moment is offering you in this divine moment. And to truly be appreciative of how far you've come and who you are today and all of the gifts that you offer the world that only you can offer because of your uniqueness. And that's it. Awesome. So thank you yeah. for that. And one last thing is, uh, is there a place people can find you if they want to reach out to you, perhaps get some information on healing circles or maybe have a yes. channeling session? Uh, you, can, you can reach me at um, clearwatermassage28 uh, at gmail.com. Clearwatermassage28, the numbers two eight at gmail.com. Um, and then from there, I can give you my number and we can have a phone conversation. Um, and I'd be very happy to, uh, if you're in my area, please come to mine every Sunday at four. Um, or I can give you the, uh, the techniques on how to, uh, the simple techniques and how to start your own group or lead you uh, to Lynn McTaggart's information and how to do that as well. If you want more information on her. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being a guest. I feel like this could also, you know, unfold into other topics or other experiences or perhaps you channeling on the show, but we'll think about that later. And so let's do to another all... one. This is so short. <laughs> yeah, no, let's do it. Um, yeah. So to all the viewers out there, thank you so much for joining us on this journey and adventure in consciousness. Uh, we appreciate you very much as well. And may this inspire you to, to find that soul note, to be that soul note, because it is, it's who you are. It's you exist and therefore you matter because you exist, because existence would not be whole without you, right? So tap into that and ground it through the action and radiate that soul love to yourself and then to others. And as you radiate it to others, you'll feel it in yourself. And as you allow it for yourself, it will be that much easier to radiate it to others. So thank you again, and we will see you in the next episode.